All right, out of all of the different groups of Pokemon characters there are, your gym leaders, your champions, your rivals, which would you say is the most forgettable? Personally, I think the most forgettable group of Pokemon characters are the Elite Four members. Originally, I would have said the gym leaders, but Generation 8 changed that and easily made the Elite Four members some of the most forgettable characters in Pokemon. So to shed some light on these characters, here is my top five favorite Elite Four members. Let's get into it. At number five is Drasna. You probably forgot who this is, didn't you? Well, in case you don't know or you don't remember, Jasna is the Dragon type Elite Four member from Kalos. Now you understand why you forgot. Kalos is pretty forgettable, and not a lot of people enjoy the Kalos games as much as some of the other games for its lack of difficulty and other things. So, why do I have Jasna as my fifth favorite Elite Four member? Well, Pokemon X was the game that brought me back into Pokemon. While Pokemon Pearl is my first Pokemon game I played, Pokemon X was the first Pokemon game I finished. I started my Pokemon Pearl game back in 2013 and never beat it until 2017. I got myself a copy of Pokemon X way back in 2016 when my old 3DS broke and I got myself a new one for my birthday and I completed that game in a week. And from July of that year until November when Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, I put over 600 hours in that game. Just in the span of a few months because it was all I did. At the time, I didn't really understand competitive and I didn't shiny hunt either. So when you don't play competitive and you don't shiny hunt, there's not a lot of things to do in Pokemon. So what I did was I would go out to a roots, I would catch some Pokemon, I would wonder trade them, and then I would just go through the Elite Four over and over, leveling them up. So while most people would forget the Elite Four members from Kalos, they're some of the characters that are the most memorable for me because I've just battled them over and over and over. And my favorite out of the four of them is Drasna, mainly because she's a dragon type user. That and Seabold and Mixtrom and Malva aren't that memorable compared to anybody else in that game. So I just went with Drasna because dragon type elite four member. That and I play through Pokemon X a lot, so I wanted to have a generation six character on this list. So with that, let's move on to number four. And at number four is Acerola. I know what you're thinking. She's a trial captain. Why is she on an elite four list? Well, if you remember from Pokemon Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon, originally Alola didn't have a leak. The whole thing there is that instead of having the gym challenge, they have trials and then you battle the kahunas back on Mount Lanakila. But then throughout the story, we see Kukui finally work on his leak. And of course, because there aren't really elite four members there before we get there, he chose some of the trial captains and kahunas to be in his elite four. And in this elite four, we have Kahuna Hala, Kahuna Olivia, Kahili for some reason instead of Hapu, even though she literally becomes a Kahuna in the storyline. Instead of Kahuna Nanu, we have Acerola. Kahuna Nanu was being his lazy self, so Acerola took over. Technically, while she is a trial captain, she's also an Elite Four member, and so are the other Kahunas. At least, two of them are. Let's move on to number three. At number three is Lance. Now, in the Generation 2 games, he's the champion. But if we go back to all of the Generation 1 games, he is an Elite Four member. And Lance is probably one of the most memorable ones. He's from Generation 1, so obviously people who just played the Gen 1 games and didn't really keep up with Pokemon are going to know him from the Elite Four compared to some of the newer characters. We also see him show up in the anime a lot, including the newest arc, and we see him battle against Leon in the World Coronation series. He's got a good design, and he's a Dragon-type user, which are some of my favorites. Let's move on to number two. At number two is Flint. So if you were to come up to me right now in person and ask me to name off the four elite four members from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, the only one I would be able to tell you is Flint. I've only gone through the Diamond and Pearl Elite Four two times and Flint is still the only one I remember because the last time I went through the Elite Four was at least a year ago. Out of all the Elite Four members in Sinnoh, Flint is the only one who actually pops up periodically throughout the story. We see Cynthia do this as well, but she's the champion not an Elite Four member, so it's just Flint. We also see him show up during the story of Pokemon Masters, and with all the characters in Pokemon Masters, we actually get to know more about them and some more of their backstory, so we get to know even more about Flint through this game. Also, the Sinnoh games only have two available Fire-type lines throughout the main story. Feel bad for Flint, so there's another reason to put him on this list, because he only has two Fire-types. He's supposed to be a Fire-type trainer, and he only has two. So here you go, Flint. Enjoy your spot. Let's move on to number one. At number one is Grimsley. Now, I don't have him on this list for nostalgia reasons, like how I have Flynn on this list because Pokemon Pearl is my favorite game. I like him solely because of his design. I somewhat recently finished my playthrough of Pokemon White, and I was very excited to finally get to the end of the game to battle Grimsley. 
Before that, my only exposure to Gang Lee was from Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, when he just shows up on the beach of Ulu Ulu Island to give you your Sharpedo Ride Pager. And he's just kind of there, chilling on the beach, for some reason in Alola and not in Unova. We also get to battle against him in the Battle Tree, which was a really nice bonus. And of course, we see him in the storyline of Pokemon Masters as well. In the PML, he's teamed up with Kahuna Nanu, and he actually talks about visiting Alola at some point. Huh. Maybe that's why he's in Alola, not Unova. But then again, it's really hard to piece together when Pokemon Masters takes place, because it's really hard to say that it takes place between, let's say, Black and White, from when Grimsley originally debuted, and somewhere in between the Generation 8 games. I mean, seriously, what point in time could there be when all of these rivals and gym leaders and Elite Four members are just on this island. Is it canon? I don't know. But maybe that could be a video for another day. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this video here. Let me know what your favorite Elite Four members are in the comments below. Did I leave out one that's extremely memorable that you're really surprised isn't on this list? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye! I'm in a tropical